I can even get calendars over iChat. You want to go to the Yankees game? Here's the schedule. Great. I click on this. I get one of these things. And again, boom. And here is, here is Yankees. Very, very simple. Right? And so this is your life with all your calendars. You can see it all. And you can manage it all so much easier now with iCal. So that's iCal. <laughs> Modern life requires multiple calendars. You've got to have a way to see them all if you're going to manage your life. And that's what iCal is about. Sharing calendars over the internet with one button publish, one button subscribe, letting you add calendars. You keep things as simple as you want or as complicated as you want. iCal runs on Mac OS X Jaguar. We're going to be shipping it this September. It's going to be a free download at apple.com. So check it out. And that's iCal. All right, now I'd like to talk for a few minutes about the digital hub. As you know, the digital hub is our fundamental strategy at Apple. We announced it 18 months ago that the, we believe the personal computer will be the center or digital hub of our new digital lifestyle. We've all got these great digital devices in our life, and having a Mac in the center of them dramatically enhances their value. And it dramatically enhances their value because we've written some incredible applications like iMovie, iTunes, iDVD, and iPhoto. And when you take those applications and you marry them to these devices, the results are astounding. And I think most of you know what I'm talking about. This has been an incredibly successful strategy for us. There's nothing like this in the Windows world. Now let me focus for a minute on iPhoto. iPhoto is an amazing application. We introduced it six months ago. It is the equivalent of your shoebox for digital photography. It imports photos from your camera seamlessly, lets you edit and crop them, etc., lets you print them out on your printers, but its real value is it safely stores your photographs. It's the digital shoebox, allows you to organize them and find things really fast and share them in ways that we never could before, like these. We can print them out, we can order prints online, fantastic slideshows, one page uh, to create a web page of our photos and host it on .Mac. And you can even, for $29.99, get a hardcover book with your photos in it that's truly outstanding. And so that's iPhoto. I'm pleased to report that in the first six months, we've distributed over 4 million copies of iPhoto. This has been one of our most popular apps ever. So that's iPhoto. Next, I'd like to focus on iTunes. We have iTunes 2 out today. It's been an incredibly successful application for us as well. As a matter of fact, iTunes and iPod together contributed to Apple being the first computer company in the world to win a Grammy this last February, and we're very, very proud of that. <laughs> iTunes 2, since it was announced 18 months ago, we've distributed over 14 million copies. Really popular. So what's next? Well, iTunes 3. Today we are launching the next major revision of iTunes called iTunes 3. What's new about it? It's got some great new features. The first one is some new ways to talk about our music. We can rate our music from 0 to 5 stars now, and we have play counts. So every time you finish playing a song, it automatically increments the play count. You can see which, how many times you play each song. And the rating's really cool, too. You can just take a song and slide it up or down and rate it from zero to five stars. So that's pretty cool. We've also added, in addition to the cross-fading that we have now and the sound enhancing, we've added a feature called Sound Check, where you just check it on, and all your songs play back at the same playback volume level, which is really nice. We've also added support for audible.com. We've had a lot of requests for this, so you can now go and buy content, spoken word content from audible.com. 
whether it be books or whether it be these Robin Williams interviews are fantastic. I'd highly recommend them from audible.com and listen to it seamlessly. You, we even keep track of the bookmarks, so if you stop and start, you can pick up right where you left off. Now, all of these features together would make a great iTunes update, but I've saved the big one for last. This is huge. Now, it's in the source column. If you look, I've got my playlists in blue right there, but what are those playlists in purple on the top? 60s music, my top rated, recently played, most 25 played. What are these? These are something totally new. These are playlists that you don't put music in. These are playlists called smart playlists. These playlists put music in all by themselves. And you set them up with rules. So let's talk about that. Let's go to my 25 most played. I want a playlist that always has my 25 most played songs in it. And as, every time I play a new song and it makes it in the top 25, I just want that playlist to shuffle around and always reflect my 25 top played songs. How do I do that? I make a simple rule. I say, I want 25 songs selected by most played. Done. I've got a playlist with my 25 most played songs. I can get really complicated too. I can go to advanced. And I can say, I want a playlist that's got music which is in the range of 1990 to 99. So 90s music, where the play count, I've played it at least 20 times, and I've rated it four or five stars. And take all that music and pick 50 songs by random and put them in this playlist. Isn't that cool? I can make a playlist that says, I want a gigabyte of songs that I've never listened to at all in a playlist so I can put it on my iPod and listen to it on the train. Right? Stuff like that. Smart playlist. So let me go ahead and give you a demo of this. It's sweet. Get out of mail here. Live chat. Launch iTunes 3. All righty. So this is iTunes 3. Looks the same, just as easy to use. And uh, you know, I can pick any song. Play it. Same as always. Now let me just go, let me find a song, uh, yeah. let me just, uh, dra let me find one that's got a play count of zero here. Okay. It's got a play count of zero, and I'm going to drag the song to the end so we don't have to listen to it. And when I'm finished listening to the song, you'll watch this play count automatically increase to one as it goes to play the next song. I can also rate this song, I can say, was it, you know, how many stars do I want in it, zero to five. Let's say we'll put four stars on the song, and now I've rated it four stars. I can sort my songs by rating and uh, look at the ones that I think are the best. I can sort them by play count or anything I want. Very, very simple. So now let me go and make a smart playlist. I'm going to make a playlist here, smart playlist. And I'm going to say uh, I love Bob Dylan. So I'm going to say artist contains Dylan. I can put as many artists in there as I want, but I like Bob Dylan. This is now a playlist of every Dylan song I have. And if I add new ones, they will automatically join this playlist. I can go say, well, this is great, but uh, I want to enhance that playlist a little bit. Uh, I want to limit it to uh, 10 songs of selected at random. And so now I've got 10 songs selected at random. As a matter of fact, if I get rid of one, if I say I don't like that one, it'll immediately put another one in because it's got to have 10 songs selected at random. Just keep replacing it. OK. I can, um, I can even go and I can say, Fine, take this playlist, and I'll switch over to advanced. It'll preserve everything I've typed in, and say, OK, I want another one where it says um, my rating uh, is, uh, let's say, is greater than three stars. So I want four and five star Dylan songs selected at random, and uh, that's what I'm going to get. So let me go show you another one. I'm going to 60s music here. And uh, this is all my 60s music. I've got a Hard Day's Night here, which is not in here uh, right now. And I can just drag a Hard Day's Night to my 